All right. So one of the cool things about Skynet is when you're observing in the radio, if you're making a map or really any kind of radio observation, you might be able to catch it executing your observation in real time. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate this now. I've set up a little map around the Crab Nebula and I'm going to submit it. So let me come down here, submit it. Okay, here it is in my queue, my observation queue. I'm gonna come over to Skynet Live and here's Green Bank. Green Bank 20 meter telescope, currently idle, but it should pick up my job uh, any moment. The job is currently, uh, the target's currently observable. It's up in the sky. In fact, here it goes. The mount is initializing. And so let's go over to telescope sites, Green Bank Observatory. I'm gonna click on the Green Bank telescope. And you can see, here's a little map of the sky. And here it comes. Crab Nebula is over here. Now, it looks like it's going the long way around, but it's not. Uh, it's just a, how the sky is being projected onto your flat screen. This is an alt-as telescope, so it's rotating on its face, like I'm in a swivel chair. So it's rotating, and the antenna is changing its altitude. Those two things are working together. And it's going to work its way over to the Crab Nebula. Now notice here, this red line is the plane of the galaxy. When it crossed the plane of the galaxy, we got more emission. We just got a spike. It must have crossed something of interest there as well. So as I explained before, the radio telescope is like a one pixel camera. And up in that detector, it has two metal rods, two perpendicular metal rods detecting two opposite polarizations. Here it's working its way across the sky, occasionally crossing things, and so we're getting detection of radiation. We'll just give it a moment to get over here close to the plane of the Milky Way again. Crab Nebula is a fun target. It's a supernova remnant a star that exploded back in 1054, so not that long ago. It was documented historically. Now you can zoom in by drawing a box. I'll draw a box right here. You see it's zooming into the target. And since I set it up to do a map, it will stop a little bit short. I'll zoom in one more time here. Okay. It always stops in the lower right, and it's going to map over this area here. Camera initializing. So the system just reset. Those spikes, it's just the camera resetting. They kind of eat up most of the dynamic range on the plot. Uh, so once they move off the plot, everything will rescale. But you see this tiny little bump here? It's actually not tiny. It's uh, suppressed because these spikes were so bright. But that is the preliminary noise calibration. The beginning of every map and at the end of every map, the beginning and end of every observation, whether it's a map or something else, we turn on this radio noise maker in the receiver. And it works its way through the entire system. And basically, it lets us know how the system is performing. And we can use the height of that bump there to calibrate everything. So it's the same from one observation to the next. We'll see it rescale here. There we go. There's the noise source. And here we see a repeating pattern because, as you probably noticed, it's mapping. Now I set it up to do a very loose map. Normally, if I'm mapping a source, it's uh, I move a little bit more slowly, and the different scans are closer together. It just takes longer to do. I figured for this video, 
I do a very uh, loose map, big gaps, not really ideal for making a picture, but good for demonstrating what's going on. Now, see, we passed underneath the crab and we got that little bump there. Now we're going to turn around again, closer to the crab and see it's even brighter this time. We'll turn around again. And this one looks like it's going to go pretty much right over top of the crab and it should be even brighter. Yeah, there we go. Remember, everything is blurred out by the optics of the telescope. And given the frequency that we're looking at and the size of the telescope, it's blurred out by about three quarters of a degree. And so we're seeing it multiple times, even though it's just a little point in this graphic, it's been blurred out over a larger region. So every time we pass over it, we detect it, the less and less, the higher up, the farther away we get. Then after the fact, all this stuff can be pieced together into an image. And in the other videos, we explain how we go about filling in the gaps between these scans and actually along the scans. We're collecting data not continuously along the scans, but from point to point to point to point. And then we have to fill it in. It should be wrapping up pretty soon. We'll wait for the end. Again, over here, this is the plane of the galaxy, so a lot of emission over there, primarily by hydrogen gas. You can see this pattern, this repeating pattern every time we turn around. Like right now, we're moving away from the plane, so it's going down. When we turn around again, moving back towards the plane, it's going back up because there's just more radio emitting stuff in the plane of the galaxy. Okay, now our terminal calibration, we just turned on the noise makers in both of our two opposite polarizing channels polarization channels, and it should be done. It's done. If I go to radio observing, it's archived. We have our preliminary data products. Well, not created yet. It usually takes a few minutes to create them. Come down to some other observation of the crab. And here you see the preliminary data products. Every time we passed over the crab until we we're passing directly over it. Preliminary images, the path map, etc. These are explained in another video.